For today's EMN5, we're going to talk about frostbite injuries. Now, these are injuries to tissue that occur in below freezing temperatures. This is in contrast to non-freezing injuries, such as chillblains or pernio or trench foot. Frostbite tends to occur to the ears, nose, cheeks, lips, so basically areas of the face and extremities such as the fingers and toes. We tend to think of this as the mountaineer's injury, but in reality we see this every day even with people who are just out for a walk or shoveling snow, and especially in our high-risk populations we see in the ER such as the homeless. The freezing injury tends to occur in four stages, pre-freeze, freeze-thaw, vascular stasis, and ischemic. In the pre-freeze stage, we see that the tissue cools down, there's a lot of vasoconstriction, and it starts to become a little ischemic, becomes a little numb, there's some paresthesias, and keep in mind that sensory loss to the nerves occurs only at around 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, so really not that cold. The next stage is the freeze-thaw stage. This is where the ice crystals actually start forming in the tissues. Now, if it freezes very fast, the ice crystals form intracellularly, whereas if it freezes kind of slower, then the ice crystals are extracellular. Either way, this causes cell dehydration and a lot of lysis and damage. In the vascular stasis stage, your body can't decide should it save the core temperature or should it save your fingers. So there's a lot of constriction and dilation every 5 to 10 minutes and this causes a lot of leaking and also clots in the vessels. This leads to our last stage, which is the ischemic stage, where we see a lot of inflammatory damage and eventually thrombus. Frostbite is classified based on how deep that freeze goes. So we have frost nip and then frost bite, which is separated into superficial and deep. The difference between frost nip and frost bite is that frost bite is frozen. That's where your tissue freezes. So frost nip, like I said, is a non-freezing injury. You get kind of numb, some pallor. We've all had this to our fingers before, and it resolves pretty quickly on rewarming, although you can have some paresthesias, especially during rewarming. Either way, there's no long-term damage to the tissues. Frost bite is actually separated in, into four degrees, again, based on how deep the tissue injury goes. The issue with this is that it can take days to weeks, sometimes up to three to six weeks, before that tissue damage really demarcates and you can see how deep the injury goes. So it's more of a retrospective classification. Therefore, we've split frostbite into superficial and deep. So superficial, which includes first and second degree, includes the epidermis and the dermis, whereas the deep injury includes the subcutaneous tissue, and then fourth degree is the muscle, tendon, and even bone freezing, so very deep. Superficial frostbite can range quite a bit in its presentation. In first degree, you have no blisters. You can see some hyperemia here in this example. Or in second degree, you have these clear blisters. And the blisters can be quite extensive. Usually, they're a little less severe if they're filled with clear fluid. And eventually, this can cause some desquamation and eschar formation. Deep frostbite or third and fourth degree causes more hemorrhagic blisters. A lot of times, you have that bluish-gray tinge to the tissue, especially on arrival and you see a little less edema. This also leads to mummification. You can see at the fingertips here, or in this example, this is during presentation. You can see those dusky ischemic toes, and again here later, mummified after the tissue is necrosed. And here's one more example of mummification weeks after the injury. So you have a patient prevent, either with a fairly benign exam, some numbness, maybe some firmness to their fingertips, some paresthesias, or something significant like blistering or obvious ischemia. What do you want to do in the ER or the field for treatment for this patient? Well, first off, let's remove any rings or any other constrictive, wet, tight clothing. Next, don't rub snow. This is an old myth. It causes further tissue damage, and snow is cold. Don't put snow on frostbite. In a wilderness situation or a rescue mission, we have to think about avoiding refreezing. If you warm the digits up, for example, and then they refreeze again later, that causes even more damage. So think about what your rescue plan is going to be, and don't rewarm them until you know that they won't freeze again. Next, we're going to warm. We're going to use 37 to 39 degrees Celsius water, so about body temperature, and you're going to do this for about 15 to 30 minutes until the extremity are soft and warm and pliable. And remember, this can be quite painful, especially if the warming goes fast. So that said, make sure and give them some pain control. Think about ibuprofen or just use opioids in these patients who are having severe pain on rewarming. You can even think about doing a wrist block, for example, if you're in the ER for pain control. Lastly, we're going to dry off the extremities, put a bulky dressing on, and make sure and separate any digits that are involved. So in the ER, these are the people I want you to call. It's either going to be your burn or plastics or surgery consults. And these are the questions you want to ask them. What do they want to do for wound care and debridement in a, within the next couple of days? There are also some controversial treatments that might be available at your center's TPA or heparin. 
Those consultants might do some imaging in the next few days to determine the extent of vascular injury and determine if the tissues are viable. And like I said, these are injuries that take a long time to really demarcate, and they're going to need some kind of follow-up down the line, whether for skin grafting or amputations. Overall, just remember the key thing here is prevention. So three to remember for frostbite. Frost nip is the non-freezing injury that causes no permanent damage. Frostbite can present somewhat subtly with firmness or cool fingertips or a little bit of duskiness or can be quite obvious with blistering, ischemia, or even just be frozen. The treatment is going to be a warming bath and a dry dressing as well as pain control. Make sure you call your consults. Thanks again for joining us on EM in 5.